Hi everyone. We have discussed that accounting is a measurement and communication system. In this system, the accountant, the stressed out and overworked guy on the left, is trying to convey a message about the firm to the receiver or the user on the right. Depending on how the message is conveyed, the user will obtain an image of that firm that will enable him to make an appropriate decision. If the message is unclear or fuzzy, it would project an inaccurate image of the firm. This will confuse the user and result in him making a wrong decision. If this is a large company, that wrong decision could cause the user to suffer tremendous losses. Since in most cases, these users are external to the company, for example, the shareholder, they have no choice but to rely on the message conveyed by the accountant. Therefore, there should be some form of control over the quality of the message prepared by the accountant. This control comes in the form of accounting standards that prescribes the way the message or financial report is prepared. This unique building is located in number 30 Cannon Street in London. It houses the Office of the International Accounting Standards Board, or better known as the IASB. The IASB is an independent, privately funded accounting standards setter responsible for issuing international financial reporting standards for use globally to control the quality of information provided in financial reports. The ISB has three main objectives. The first is to develop in the public interest a single set of high quality, understandable and enforceable global accounting standards. The second is to promote the use and rigorous application of these standards. And finally, to bring about convergence of national accounting standards. The main beneficiaries of the IASB standards are large multinational companies that operate in many different national jurisdictions and large public listed companies that would like to attract global investors. These companies would benefit from a single set of financial reporting stands so as to ensure that their financial reports are more comparable. There will be no need to incur additional costs to prepare separate financial reports in countries with different national accounting standards if everyone follows the IASB standards. One of the main challenges for the IASB is to ensure that the international financial reporting standards are enforceable across national boundaries. This is difficult because the IASB do not have legal jurisdiction over the countries of the world. The solution is to impose economic influence over these countries to adopt the international standards. This was achieved when the International Organization of Securities Commissions, or IOSCO, based in Madrid, endorsed the international financial reporting standards for application in all the major global stock exchanges. The adoption of the global standards were further advanced when the European Union adopted them as well. To date, there are over 100 countries that have adopted the IASB standards in order to boost their respective economies. But the question remains of how IASB can enforce or mandate the application of the international standards if they do not have legal authority in the countries of the world. This was achieved by having the respective countries set up their own accounting standards board. In Malaysia, the Malaysian Accounting Standards Board, or MASB, was set up to promote the application of the international financial reporting standards issued by the IASB. The MASB was established under the Financial Reporting Act 1997. Under this act, companies are mandated to use accounting standards approved by MASB, which in effect were the IASB standards. 
As a consequence, the IASB financial reporting standards now have the force of law and companies in Malaysia must comply with its requirements. In order to convince so many countries to adopt these global accounting standards, the IASB had to ensure that they were of high quality. In order to do this, the IASB had to develop a coherent set of accounting objectives and principles that would ensure the logical and consistent development of standards for financial reporting. This was achieved through the publication of the Conceptual Framework for Financial Reporting, which we will discuss in the next video. Till then, be awesome. Cheers.